I've decided to do quite a few painting experiments with color, and if you come along with me, I think we'll learn a lot. Let's get started. There do, there's a tendency when you paint a lot to kind of keep painting, well, kind of in your range, if you know what I mean. Keeping go going back to the same colors, and, and that's really terrific. But I've been feeling a little stifled by that lately, so I'm decided to do some experiments. And let me explain a little bit about what's happening here. What I did was I found a painting by someone that I like who doesn't use the colors that I normally use. She definitely uses, um, I would say, more primary colors and less neutrals. And so what I did as an experiment was I printed out a picture of hers from the internet and identified the colors in her painting. And that's what's above. That's what those little rectangles are. And then right next to it, I wrote down the recipe for them, for how to mix them. So in a sense, what I've done is I've, it's not that I've, I'm copying someone else's painting. Her painting was a completely different subject. But what I did do was lift the colors from her painting and put them into these discrete rectangles. And now I'm going to plug color into value with a paint with a um, still life that I set up. And I wanted to see, would it be different? Would it be fun? Would it be exciting? And I have to say, it, it is and it was. So I had to really stick to the formula. That was probably the biggest challenge. Every time I wanted to kind of go uh, off the rails and find a color mix that I would usually use, I reminded myself of what my goal was. And I would look very carefully at the rectangles that I made above and tell myself, you have to stick to the recipe. You have to stick to the recipe. And so that's what I did. So on the plate, for example, I mixed up that dark green, which was similar to what she had. On, and then I also mixed up a lighter green. So I've, I'm still doing my dark mediums and lights and using my color shapes. Nothing's really changed here, except that I'm using someone else's color instead of either trying to replicate the color that I see in front of me or using colors, um, mixes that I've used before and I'm accustomed to. And I think that's gonna really stretch and make me grow. And I'm hoping that it makes my work more varied as well. There's such a tendency. You can just imagine that if your ingredients for baking were always exactly the same, that there's gonna be sort of a sameness to what your baking output is. And I want to shift and change that because I don't wanna sort of thought to myself, I don't want a year from now to um, just be painting the same thing or painting in the same way, and I want this to stretch and grow. So I had to think to myself, okay, what are some of the ways that you could stretch and grow? And I thought, well, one of the ways would be to use different colors. Now, that doesn't mean that I bought new tubes of paint, although I did. I bought three new tubes of paint, but I'm not putting them on my palette yet because I'm not sure that I really like them. But I did add three colors. And, but more importantly, I'm not freewheeling it with my own decisions. I'm going to decide strategically ahead of time what colors I'm going to use, and they're going to correspond to someone else's work that I really admire. And my guess is that I'm going, I'm sure I'm going to find a Winslow Homer <laughs> somewhere in there or that I really, really love. So it's going to be kind of fun because uh, I think it's going to really cause me to think really carefully about color in a different way than I have before. And then eventually, or when I decide that I don't want to do this anymore, I mean this kind of experimenting anymore, I'll return to my own work. And I just think that my work is going to shift a little bit. Now what you're seeing happening here is, um, if you've watched my channel for any period of time, you know exactly what's happening here. I'm, I've always established my darks, my mediums, and my lights. I put in my value shapes. Oftentimes my darks first, then my mediums, and finally my lights. And sometimes I go the other way, lights, mediums, darks. In this case, I went with my darks first. I try to use as few strokes as possible, and I try to uh, simplify forms whenever I can. I'm not suggesting that you should do that or anybody should do that, but there has to be a reason to be excited about painting. Otherwise, why show up? At least that's how I feel. So I, need, I always need to structure somehow that, that there's something... I want to say exciting or feeling like it's a high wire act a little bit, that it's a challenge. Yeah, that would be the word. I need a challenge. Uh, otherwise, I, I find myself, oh, either hemming and hawing or not getting down to the work. And I do think that what I felt here was a certain exhilaration because it felt, it felt different. 
and I think I need that right now. And it certainly did prove to me, as if I didn't know already, that how irrelevant color is to the value. So I'm staying very, um, I'm staying completely keeping the same value as what's in the picture. I'm not matching the picture to the, not matching my colors to the photograph, but I am matching value to the photograph because I have already figured out that, that that value pattern really works. Now I'm just putting in some darks that uh, were not as, as dark as I, they initially were. You know, what I would call final touches. Sometimes there's some adjustments to do at the very end. And sometimes you'll find when you paint, you, you think you see everything. And then about 45 minutes later, all of a sudden it's as if your seeing is heightened and you see something that you didn't see before. It's an interesting phenomenon. So there you can see what the task was and the colors that I used in order to make this painting. And I have to say, it was a lot, a lot of fun. So you might decide to do the same kind of thing. Find a painting that you like, mix the colors that that artist used, and then plug them into a subject that you enjoy. So remember to keep the whites of your paper white, your paint sweat, mass for value, mix for color. And I'll see you at the next painting experiment. Oh, enjoy my YouTube channel, please. Okay, bye-bye.